gonna shut the door so nobody fucking bothers us. See my air, my so neck. This doesn't pick up air dropping for some reason. What am I doing with this camera over here? Um, that's two, one, the, right? The two. Okay. Now wide, so now I don't want three on me. I don't want camera three on me. I don't need a camera on me. I want. Put the three on Stein. Uh, yeah, I want one to be a one on Lewis. I want two to be a two shot, and I want three to be a one on oh, Stein. Stein. You see these that came out? They were very hard to get. They were like, they're like Supremes. Oh, because it's in Yeah. Oh, those are nice. But I like the, got patent leather. I like the colorway. Those are Air Max 97s, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like 95s and 97s. We're talking Spanish right now. But they weren't like, it wasn't like, you know, you get online at 10 o'clock and you have a shot at getting it. You had to get a ticket the day before at like, I think it was Nike Town had it and somebody else. And Foot Locker, because I have a kid that works at Foot Locker. He couldn't even get a lottery Damn. ticket to get it the next day. So, it was not happening. Aftermarket. Yeah. I got, I got a student at my school who does this, the shoes, and like every, every once in a while, like on a Saturday, he'll be like, Sensei, listen, can I just keep my phone near my bag? Because yeah. I know... You know, and then he just has to keep hitting, like, Refresh. reload, reload, reload. Are we talking about Nikes? Yeah. Anything. He used to go on, like, that. three different sites at a time. Mm-hmm. Like Foot Locker. You got your iPad, your phone, yeah. the computer. Well, that's like when the Red, when the Red October's dropped. I was telling oh, Shion you know, how they go for, like, too. Good. 8,000. He's like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> I go, right, but people do it as a business investment. Right. So let's say I right, said to you, Shion, do you want to buy these shoes for $250? Bang, 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 bang. Now, before you say no, a little tighter there's on the a guy behind you that's saying, I'll give you 8000 for it. Mm -hmm. Would you give me 250 for it? He goes, fuck it. Yeah. I go, well, that's what happens. People buy them with no intention of keeping yeah. them just to resell them. Mm -hmm. I don't know who does that. Yeezys are crazy like that, right? I don't, I don't, I don't really have any Yeezys. Those. I don't have either, but they look comfortable. I like the, the newer ones little, look little comfortable. They look like Roche No, no, it does right. not. Yeah. But you have those. No. I, I have Roche Runs, yeah, but those. not Yeezys. I like the Nike Yeezy 2s. Those are nice. Oh, yeah, the 49 Okay, Lewis, I'm going to get ready to play your a intro. Little tighter on, on... Yep. No, Stein, we're good. Okay. Um, Bill, can you just tell, help me out with one thing here? <laughs> the 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 power should, meter over here? I probably should have too. It's just a little bit... Oh, no, I can see it up here. No, we're good. We're good. This is... Oh, by the way, this is preview program right okay. now. If you... This is what's being seen. I'm looking at the left win right window, not the left window. Yeah. This is what's Please. being seen. This I messed is what's that being shit up recorded. last week. Yeah. Now, Fighter and the rolling. Kid. Okay. We're rolling. Big Brown Breakdown. But uh, I love Joe Rogan. Uh, Especially when he gets like, he gets all different camera, people. The fight campaign is the Make sure that camera's over. over. And I changed in program, right? The other one that you said was good. And I changed in program. Up here. Yep. That was good. One, two, three, four. So right now your camera, right now your camera's like, I think he has ADD. I'll do the one on one. Yep. Like your kid's five, they're six. Okay. They have energy. Yeah, they don't know how to focus. You weren't like that as a kid? Exactly. We all were. Exactly. I could probably get it now. I could probably go <laughs> and get In college, my, my, one of my friends, she was a girl, she was like, I think you have ADD. Do this test online. So I'm doing the questions. I was like, this is boring. She's <laughs> like, that proves you have it. I was like, it's too many questions. <laughs> we're good to go? <laughs> we have Talking about my ADD. We all have it nowadays, Larry. Everybody has it. And what is it? Everybody gets on Ritalin or, or yeah, Adderall. What's ADD? It's when you get bored easily or you get distracted. Attention deficit disorder. Attention <laughs> deficit disorder, basically. There's so much going on. Yeah, that's a whole other issue we could talk about. But today we're going to be talking about uh, <laughs> yeah, fitness. fitness and nutrition, not attention deficit disorder. And we have to stay on topic because we only got 20 minutes with, uh, with Sensei Stein over here. This is uh, Sensei Stein, the head instructor of the Rego Park. Tiger, Sh Tiger Shulman's. Queens How Boulevard. Long, Queens Boulevard. How long have you been training, Sensei? I started in 1997. 1997, so 20 years, mm -hmm. basically. 20 years. And where did you start? What school did you start with? Who was your instructor? I started in Hicksville with Sensei Kern, which is, it moved to Plainview now. Right. Com well, not, and then combined with Sayasa, but uh, that's where I started. Then from there, I went to Massapequa with two other instructors that you know aren't in it no more. And then from there, I went to Great Neck, where I had my first school, my right. first opportunity. And now in Rego Park for the last 11 years. It's been 11 years already. Mm -hmm. Wow. Long time. So, um, But I do remember the first time I met you. Oh. How I old was I? This. I got to hear this. Well, I knew, well, first of all, I heard, when I first started, 
Tiger Shulman's. They're like, yo, you got to see this kid. He went to those, I think it was, I maybe you, you correct me if I'm wrong, third degree black belt test. Mm -hmm. And you have to do 10 rounds in a row, but. Like, 21 minute rounds. This kid was tapping everybody out in 30 seconds or less, so they would let him rest for the rest of the round. I'm like, wait a minute. Because they, like, they always like pumped up how difficult the test was. So they're right. Like, they're like, but then we, there's this one kid, they, they came back talking about it. I wasn't there, I was like a white belt. They're like, this, when did you get third degree? Oh God, 1998. Right. So I was yeah. like a white or blue belt at the time, and like you should have seen this kid. He was tapping everybody out, and he was resting for the rest of the round. This was you. Yeah. Right. But the first time that I met you was 2002, Ray Longo's gym. Oh, when I fought. It was my first amateur kickboxing match, and I was 22 years old. I remember I trained my ass off. I was so nervous. This guy comes in, street clothes. Someone's like, "Hey, Louis, you want to fight?" Next thing I know, he's doing a three-way stretch. Five minutes later, he's in the ring. Yeah. I was like, this kid is out of his mind. I'm sitting here pissing my pants. This kid throws on a pair of shorts and goes in there and wins a fight, comes back smiling. My, uh, my That mom, was the first time I ever met you. I was like, holy shit, this kid's out of his mind. My mom went to go park the car, and we're circling the block. So she's like, go get some seats. So I go in. Um, she on Dave Torelli is my instructor at the time, and he's like, hey, this, this guy in the back, his opponent didn't show up. What do you weigh? Yeah. I'm like, uh, you know, 128, 127. He's like, perfect. You want to fight? I was like, yeah. I go in the back. They, it's not like it is now. They do like a quick medical right. check. And then they're like, uh, your parent needs to sign this. He's like, I'm his father. <laughs> just forges the paperwork. My mom comes in, just gives me a hug, and then leaves. She's like, I didn't want you to do it, but I'm not trying to talk you out of it. Your mind's already set. And you won easily. Yeah, that, I was tired. I was tired. And I remember them like, like, that's the kid we were telling about. I'm like, okay, now it all makes sense. This is the kid that was having everybody out. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, then I went to college. Then you went to college and came back and started kicking ass. Yeah, freshman 20, freshman <laughs> 15. But uh, speaking of freshman 15, putting on some weight, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, taking some weight off. So first thing I want to talk to you about is um, the difference between Tiger Showman's um, martial arts training and going to a gym. Um, you know, a lot of people, when they're looking to get in shape, that's the first thing they think about is the gym, mm. especially New Year's is two months away. 2008, that's crazy. 2018 mm. is two months away, and I still think that 2008 was like last year. Time flies. Anyway, <laughs> um, so you know, so January's coming around, people are going to be looking to go in the gym, and a lot of people start, and within two weeks to a month, you know, the gym is empty again and, and back to normal. Um, so, what's the difference between, you know, Tiger Showman's and, you know, going to the gym and getting a workout that way? I mean, one of the things that at least for me, and I'm sure for you, you two kids, right? Mm -hmm. Time is everything. So majority of people go to the gym not having a lot of time, not knowing what to do with their time. Right. And whatever they do, typically most people do not get a trainer, right? So they don't really know what to do. Maybe they go on Instagram, watch a couple of videos, this right. and that. And then it's hard enough first of all for them to get motivated and get consistent. And then when they get there, they don't know what to do. So a lot of times, I mean, with the experience of people that I have that come to my school that went to the gym and quit several times over before they finally made that decision mm -hmm. to find a place that's going to you know, guide them, encourage them, like what we do. Because think about it, our class is one hour long. We get so much done in such a short amount of time. Right. I mean, there's only, what are you really only resting for nine minutes throughout the workout? I mean, it's constant work. When someone in the gym, it's so easy to take a break. It's so easy. Look, I tell everybody, the gym down the block from me, three blocks down, I train two of their trainers. Two of their trainers come to me to get in shape. They have over 3,000 members. An average of 250 show up per week. Imagine if all 3,000 showed up at the same time. FDNY nice. would close them down. It'd be a fire hazard, right? Right, right, right. So majority of people that go, within a matter of weeks, they lose interest because they're doing the same thing over and over. Then they say, I don't see results. Yeah, you're not gonna see results after three or four weeks. It's not magic, it takes time. People don't understand that. Right. People think they can just work out before the summer. If you wanna be in shape, you gotta work out consistently. You, you gotta right. eat right all the time. Mm -hmm. But people don't understand that. So really, the problem is they go to a gym, they don't get any results very quickly, and then they're quitting. Or they just end up keep paying it, and then the membership runs out, and they get no results, and they lost their money. Right. They need someone that's going to motivate them. They need someone that's going to encourage them. To, really, they need to be educated. right? They need to be put on a schedule. They need, look, when someone comes to our classes, all they have to do is show up. That's the hardest part of their classes is getting there. That the Once you get here, there. I'll take care of the rest. You don't mm -hmm. have to think about anything. Now, you go to the gym. Even some, once in a while when I go to the gym, I'll sometimes I'll look at the phone and I'll look up different workouts because I'm not just making it up as I go along. I'll have a workout in mind before I get there because if I don't, I'm not going to get a lot done. You get easily distracted. Very easily. I remember being in college, you know, going to the gym. There wasn't a Tiger Showman's round where I can go and I would go with two or three guys and 
in a two hour workout, we were BSing right. for an hour and 40 minutes. You know what I mean? You got yep. four guys on a, on a bench press machine. Yeah. Most of the time we're just talking while the other person's doing reps and stuff. So not even sweating. time management, yeah, not even sweating time management. You know, I didn't even, I didn't even think of that. You know, my first mm. thing that I think about is, you know, motivation. I've been hurt before, you know, after a mm. fight or before a fight, you know, and I got to do something. The doctor's like, well, you can't even run the treadmill. You can't live yet. You got to go on the elliptical, you know, cause you can't bounce if my shoulders hurt. And I think I'm on it for a half hour, you know, I'm watching something on the boat. And then I look and it's been seven minutes. It's like, oh, uh, get me off this thing. Yeah. And time goes by so slow, but we get so much done, like yeah. you said, in an hour, as opposed to gym with two hours, you don't get as much done, you know? And even if you're focused, you might have to wait for that machine. Right. Or wait for, oh, I got to wait for those dumbbells or wait for the bench press, you know, because other people are using it. You get on the phone, you start text messaging. Look, there's plenty of times I'm sure you worked out on your own. I know I've done it. Whether I got a phone call, picked up a text message, then all of a sudden I'm, I cool down. All right, I'm done for the day. Yeah. Because yeah. once you, yeah, when you warm, you warm. But I mean, in a class like ours, just think about the the connection you build with the instructor, the connection you build with the students around you, the energy in the class. People tell me all the time, "Wow, your classes are really big." I said, "Yeah, they are," and that's why they're big. Is because there's energy. They say, "Oh, do you do private lessons?" No. No, I don't. I'm like, you don't want that. You want to be in a class where there's other people, mm -hmm. energy. I tell students all the time, like even when I'm training my advanced students, I said, look. You know, sometimes I don't get it right away. I'm looking at him, Lewis. I'm looking at Jimmy. I'm like, how are they doing it? Let me see. I was watching Shane today when we were doing that armbar because I knew I wasn't doing it right. So I watched him a couple times. Boom, I did it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when you're doing things on your own, there's nobody else to kind of feed off of. And I yeah. think that's what the energy of the class is. What Because uh, everyone needs a pat on the back once in a while or a kick in the ass. Yeah. You know what they need, right? Either or. And they get both of those in our school. So Yeah, and you get to, you get to know the students on a personal level. And one of the things I think about is, you know, um, Tiger Shulman, when he's coaching the fighters, different fighters respond different ways. You know, some mm. people need to be yelled at or smacked around. Yeah. Some people need a hug and need to be talked to a little bit calmer. And he kind of, he's good with that psychology. And I've taken that, you know, when I'm teaching, different people get motivated different ways. Right. Like you just said, sure. some people need a pat on, pat on the back. Some people need a smack in the some ass. Some people so. got to leave alone. <laughs> some people, you don't got to, you know, you got to let them do their thing. Mm -hmm. Psychology is such a great word to use because, I mean, to be a martial arts instructor, you basically have to be like a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist to be able to figure out the different you know patterns people have and mm -hmm. what they need and what they don't need different people get motivated you know sometimes ways. more than uh, just exercise too you know they feel like they've built something you've helped them so much you know get reach their goals and now they feel like they want to tell you everything mm -hmm. which I don't want to know that I just want to <laughs> know I'm here to get you in shape because people come to me I mean I have had a woman come to me the other day she starts telling me about a problem she's having with her husband I said alright stop I said, that's none of my business. I, that is not my problem. I go, you want to learn how to throw a jab cross and lose weight? I'm your guy. I go, when it comes to that, I'm sorry I can't help you. But I just want you to, to know why I haven't been training with the same energy I've been training. I'm like, you're doing great. Don't worry about it. And that's all she needed. Yeah. You know? You know, but there's certain things that uh, I don't want to get into. And that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there to get you in shape. Right. That's <laughs> this it. This isn't the sofa. Um, one of the big differences I also think about is we're actually learning something, you know, in the class. 100%. You can go to uh, CKO classes and, and, and get a good workout, but they're not teaching you the right way to punch or kick. You're going to get hurt sometimes, you know, the way they're training you to do stuff. You're going to learn effective techniques, punches, kicks, knees, elbows in our jiu-jitsu classes, close range defense, you know, how to get out of a bad position using technique and leverage, you know, not strength and, and muscles. So, you know, I like to tell the students, look, Self-defense is like car insurance. You want to have it, but you hope that you never have to use it. Exactly. So it's good to know that, look, you're going to get a great workout, but you're not just punching and kicking. We're going to teach you the right way to do it. In the intermediate class, you learn distance, timing. You learn your defensive maneuvers. And that's a big difference between, you know, going to the gym. You'll get in shape if you're motivated, if you stick with it, but you're not really learning anything. Well, I think the key thing, too, just the way you talk about the program and the love you have for it and the passion, it's, it's, it's like your life, right? I have, a no, I have a friend, friend, he fought a little amateur. He was fighting around the same time Fischetti was fighting, so he knows mm -hmm. of Fischetti and how good he was. From Long Island, he works in a gym near my house, and he also teaches, he was, teaches classes at, um, not CKO, title boxing. Okay. I said, so how is it? He said, it sucks. <laughs> like, what do you mean it sucks? He goes, I just go there to get paid. I'm like, so you're, t this, is, this is an instructor, instructor telling, telling me about it. He's this. like, my class there sucks. I said, oh, really? I said, this is what you tell people? He's like, no, of course I don't tell people that, but th <laughs> the class sucks. I said, why? Well, because I have to read off this piece of paper. There's no demonstration. There's no contact. There's no real self-defense taught. 
It's just him calling out numbers, and that's it. So there's really there's no application of this is a sh if you're in the street, someone approaches you. What's your first line of defense? They don't explain the distance. Right. They don't explain the right way to strike. They just allow them to hit the bag, and as long as they get their heart rate up, I said, so you know, give me an idea. Ten round workout, but I don't let them rest between rounds. In between rounds, they're doing jump squats and burpees. I said, after a three minute round, I enjoy that one minute rest. I yeah, need yeah. that one minute rest to recover. Oh no, I have them do burpees. So you can imagine the fact that the instructor even says himself that the curriculum and the formula of that school sucks mm -hmm. and he's one of the instructors he just does it for a paycheck so when you don't have an instructor that is passionate about it and wants to be there right obviously that's going to show and this is one of my friends he goes what you guys do is so much better yeah, yeah. well it is i said i know <laughs> you know like just just like you i've been doing it 20 something years yeah and not a day goes by i don't think about punching or kicking or grappling i'm walking around my house sometimes with shadow boxing <laughs> Yeah, you get yourself doing that, you go sure. to breakfast and you just throw some punches. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big difference between yeah. us and not just gyms, but other martial arts schools. Because we care. Doesn't No one no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care, right? I'm sure you have a lot of kids and, and adults that look up to you, yet they don't know this champion that you were and, and fighting in the UFC. They don't need to know that. They know you. They know you. They know how much you care about them how much effort and time and how dedicated you are to getting them to where they want to be. Not that you got this fight of the night bonus. And, I mean, yeah, that's all. That's great too. That's a great personal accomplishment, which mm -hmm. I'm sure makes them proud to talk about their instructor. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is how much you care about them. Mm -hmm. And it shows. You know, I see it all the time. Just from talking to different people, seeing trainers in the gym, they don't really care. Yeah. They just want to get a paycheck. A lot of the parents don't even know you know, my I don't I don't really talk about it, so they might be there for just those two pictures or three all weeks. over the walls. Yeah, they'll see the <laughs> pictures and then they Google something and they'll come in and say, yeah. "Since I went on YouTube, oh my God, you're crazy! Yeah. I saw that stuff." But they wouldn't think about it. I right. mean, I teach five and six year olds. That wasn't their first introduction. They would they would think yeah. of me. You know, if you said cage fighter, that's not the image that they would right. get. The guy teaching five and six year olds about self defense and you know sticking up for themselves against bullies. Mm -hmm. But then they see me in the cage and it's a completely different, not completely different person, but. You know what I mean? And you're you're in the cage. You're in a fight. They I see understand. they see the the tough guy Louis Galano playing octopus. <laughs> Six year olds. <laughs> no, but I have no problem saying we're the best. I I totally believe that we're the best. I don't think there's anyone better than that. I tell people all the time. You know what? I want you to go somewhere else, and I want you to try it back. You're not gonna let me sign up. I don't want you to sign up. Go somewhere else. See you know, the difference. Yeah, please, because because I'm very confident you're gonna be back. Because you know you're gonna get results. Yeah, go somewhere else. Before, I want you to before. see what else is out there. And then let me know what's, because that's what life's about. Find out what's best for you. Mm -hmm. I, th I know we're the best. I'm very confident in that. So one of the things besides working out, if you're looking to get in shape, you're looking to get ripped, is nutrition. And uh, Larry's got a question. How do I get abs like you? <laughs> I, I need to have abs like Mike Stein. I, and from what he said, just said, abs are built in the winter time, so we're good. We're coming Built up in the kitchen. Time. Well, 100%, obviously, you have to train. You have to be trained consistently. It's got to be, uh, you know, consistent basis every week like I, I mean I'm sure the same you guys are the same way just from being in martial arts for so long and having that discipline you become a creature of habit waking up at the same time eating the same meals at the same time every day so you know you can't do one without the other obviously exercise is 50% but if you're not eating the right foods because I think a lot of people like think oh I just had a great class so let me go out let me get a couple drinks whatever like they're almost like a reward to themselves is to eat something but and it cancels out that work 100% obviously. if you're not eating the right foods on a regular basis I mean Remember the nutrition program that we had that we used to print out? It just said proper nutrition on it. Mm -hmm. Those little two sheets of paper? Yep. That was 100% on point. Everything that, that those two pieces of paper said, eating meals every two to four hours you're awake, people talk about like measuring food out, like bodybuilders measure their food out. Nobody has the time to do that. Nobody has the discipline to do that. The amount of protein fits in the palm of your hand. The amount of carbohydrates fits in the palm of your hand. The amount of fats, and then they list the good fats, avocados, things like right. that, the size of your thumb. And if you portion your meals out that way, so much easier. So, so much, much easier. I prepare all my meals in advance. I cook three times a week. I do Friday nights, Wednesdays, and Sundays. So I always have my meals ready to go, right. cooked in advance. And how long does it take you to prepare those meals for those couple of days? Honestly, I could do it in under an hour. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same every time. Chicken, turkey, rice, spinach, avocado. And it saves a lot of money too, probably. Hundred percent. I don't. I barely eat. I, once a week, I'll go out. Mm -hmm. Once a week, but that's it. You don't eat fish. I do. Yeah. I do. I usually like to get like, but that's when I'll, I don't bring that with me. That I cook and I eat it right away, mm -hmm. only because I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Yeah. I've had food poisoning before. Actually, the last COC. Oh. 
the last COC on the way home, I had something in my bag. You know, all day you work and you, you don't have time to eat, so I ate it, not even remembering that it was sitting there for a while. It was a beet hummus from Trader Joe's. I got home, I was sick for 24 hours straight. Oh. Never again. Now I carry a cooler everywhere I go. I have a cooler in there right now. <laughs> so that's the biggest thing. If people are going to carry their food around, I suggest that they put it in a cooler. Mm -hmm. I actually have a guy in my school, he works for U.S. Foods, and he's a former chef, now he's like a food specialist, and he brought in a thermometer, and he was testing our food. He says, if you guys leave your food out for more than 30 minutes in this type of temperature, it was like the summertime, right. but it was in the school, you know, air conditioned, the amount of bacteria that grows on that food in just in 30 minutes alone would get, get you sick. Just so in 30 minutes? 30 minutes. He had a laser thermometer, he tested all of our foods, because we had our food out, it was like, you know, after your class is over, you want to just eat it, so we just left it there. And he's like, whose food is this? He goes, let me test it. Came back the next day, tested it. So ever since then, now that I pep all my meals in advance, which is key to getting in shape, key to keeping a good body, and then um, making sure that all the food is fresh. So that's why I cook three times a week. Because some people, some people like want to do it on Sundays for the week. Mm -hmm. You do chicken on Sunday, you try to eat it on Friday, you don't want to eat it. No, no, no. You got to do it every two to three days. It's so. a little stale. 100%. Oh, those are nice. It's consistency, really. So we're going to jump into our uh, two guys top five segment. Mm. Uh, I know you're a sneakerhead like me. You love your sneakers. Absolutely. So what we do is we just go back and forth. You do your number five. I do my number five. You do your four, four, so on and so forth. So out of your top five sneakers, what would be your number five? Number five, I have it at Reebok Pump. It's not that Reebok Pump, but the Court Classic. Come on, Larry. It's a black with the orange, the basketball tongue. Reebok Pump Court Classic. That's right. No, those are the Jordan 3s. Those are the Shacks. Come on, man. I had a pair of those too, though. But the reason why, like, I don't know why you got into sneakers, but the reason why I got into sneakers is because Tell me the name again. Reebok Pump Court Classic. If you go under images, I'm sure I'll show up. I got into sneakers because, well, my first pair of sneakers ever that I got into was a pair of Air Jordan 4s. But that's when I was in fourth grade. My mother would never buy me the Reebok pumps, would never buy me the Jordans. I'm like, Mom, please, I have to have them. She's like, no, you cannot. I'm not paying for that. Right. So I saved up all my money from Christmas, from my birthday, and from some shoveling snow, and I bought a pair of Air Jordan 4s, and that was the first ones, the uh, military 4s. Uh-huh. And not those, but it's okay. He'll send you the picture later so yeah. you can get to throw it up. No. So that's how I got into sneakers. So then when I was able to make my own money, now I just buy all the sneakers I can never have as a kid. Yeah. And a pair of Reebok pumps was one of them. And they just came back out with them. No, those are nice. Put basketball sneakers. Reebok pumps. That'll probably come up. Come on, Larry. I don't wear sneakers. They were, who was, the, who was the one? He did the dunk for the Celtics like this. Um, D. Brown. D. Brown. They were the D. Browns. He, he, he pumped them up and then he did the no look. Mm -hmm. He was dabbing before people ones. were dabbing. There you go, all the way to the left. See the D brown up top left? That's the one, yeah. Those are them. Those are nice. Right. I don't rock a lot of Reeboks, but I like the Iversons. The first Iversons were nice. Yeah, I don't like any Reeboks except for these. Those were nice. Do you got mine up left? Mm -hmm. Where am I? What's your number So five? I'm going to go with, for my number five, I'm going to go with the brown one right there, Larry. There you go. Oh, ah, New The Balance. New Balance. Any color. Fresh, They're just so comfortable. Clean, clean looking. They're just so comfortable. White, black. They were in style back when I was in high school. Everybody I was told this them. is the top sh selling shoe of all time. Really? Someone told me that. Somebody told me that this was the top selling shoe, the New Balance 574, right? They're just so That's the comfortable. Same, yeah. Any color looks good. And they're not expensive. I think now they're probably like 89, but they were like 70 bucks, 74.99 back in the day. I'm wrong. <laughs> Air Jordan 3, the 16 most important. Best signature. Uh, Top selling. Well, this is only 2016. That's 2006. 2016. 616. Number one time. was Adidas. Number two is Jordan 7. No, I'm sorry, Jordan 12. 12s. Well, that was 2016. Flu game. I was going to put 12s as one of mine, actually. Those are good. So I have the flu games. Those are my, I like so those. would you say that's your number two right there? I mean, this your number four. four. My number four, I put threes. Three, threes are nice. That's your favorite color, the true blues? Actually, I just got a pair of the True Sport Blue. Pull up the True Sport Blue. You, you're going to know these. Black and... The black and blue. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Well, they dropped the True Blues True recently. Sport recently. Blue? And they still... They, they stayed out for like a couple of weeks afterwards. Like, they yeah, weren't they like a... Like wasn't a big sell. But the True Sport Blues, I found them online for a good price, and I picked them up. Now, do they have they have Nike Air on the back or the Jumpman? Which they one? have the Jumpman. Obviously, I want the Nike Air. The Nike this? Air. Well, they're coming out threes in December. The breads that are going to say have the Nike Air on yeah, the back. Yeah, have the Nike Air. I still have my Mocha threes. 
They haven't retro. Those are wild. Those are nice. Why does it say Puma? What's your number four? So my number four would be the Air Jordan 4. Larry, oh. it's the corner right there. There you go. Boom. My number two. Fresh. I love those. Any colorway, that's one of my favorites. Pull up the Motorsport 4s. I want to see if you like these. Do you know these? They just Motorsport dropped recently. black and yellow? Black, blue, and white. Say the name again. Motorsport. Motorsport. Air Jordan 4. I was so excited when these came out. I thought they were going to sell out. There you go. Nope. Those are nice. And the alternate. Look at the alternate. I got the alternate too. Go down to the, the black. I like the black ones better. I love both of them. Those are nice. See, I, I don't wear a lot of blue because it classes. I like the white green. one better. <laughs> <laughs> that would be in my number four. My three was the uh, Jordan 11s. That was also my three. Any color. Right? I like the white and black. Concords? Yeah. Okay. Those are nice. I have those. I got a couple of 11s. I like the lows with the green, the snake skin. I got those as well. I just bought the the first low top I got was the Barons. I like them. Yes. I like them a lot. The gray ones, those are nice. So that was also my number three, classic. You can wear them with anything. Number two, I had the fours. Number two was fours. the fours. I, that's what I put. I, yeah, it was your four. That was your yeah. three, right? Yeah. Cement fours I like, yeah. Those are nice. I like the black ones too. The breads are nice. Pull, pull up the royalty fours. See if he likes those. Royalty fours. You know those? The uh, gold? No. What color? Royalty. The gold. Oh, yeah. Those are nice. Mm. They had them in kid sizes too. I got my son the... The... The white and chrome ones. Those are nice. So we have the matching He's ones. He's a cute kid. I see him on Instagram. He's a good looking those kid. Those are nice too though. I like those. I should have got those. How much was going for now? How old's your daughter now? She's nine now. She's going to be 10 in January. That's awesome. So about time flying. I mean when you carried her in here in a... What do you call it? The little... What are they called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the car seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. While wow, I was training. No, no, not that. There you go, Larry. Those are my number twos. Ugly Christmas I sweater. I love those. Like, <laughs> what did you call them? They're called Ugly Christmas they're called, sweaters. They're called, those are called the Ugly Christmas sweaters. So the one, the gray ones, I wait online at 7 o'clock in the morning for at a skate shop next to Hoboken. <laughs> the guy online, so those black ones, they only made 500 of them. They released them in one store. You have those too? In Maine. or Mar uh, Yeah, it was, I think it was Maine. At a sneaker con, I had the Air Jordan 1s, the SBs. They were black and green. And I trade them with a the guy for those. So I still have those never worn, the black ones. Well, how do you keep your shoes at your house? you like to display them or keep them in boxes? I keep them in boxes. Keep them in boxes, boxes right? Out of see, sight, out of mind. The missus think, can't see them all. Yeah. I see in this one cool thing. It's like it's like a shoe box, but it's a, like yeah. a trunk yeah. that you can put your stuff in. Those are beautiful. It opens Handmade. up. I, I, now here's a question for somebody who's not a sneakerhead, right? What is the most that you could that you could um, justify spending on a pair of sneakers? I'm going to get to that answer in a second. After we get to the second. number one? When okay. we get to the number one. What's your number one? 95s. So comfortable. Love them. Air Max 95s. I like the original colors. Like So this, so I I, I go to a, a seller on Amazon. It's called Shoe Prime, And I had ordered an original pair, an orange. And these came. You saw these with all different. Oh, I never saw those. <laughs> so I kept them. It wasn't nice. what I ordered, but I loved right. them. It was yeah. supposed to be this colorway. Right, just the And orange. then these came like, you know what? I kind of like these. I, I had keep those them. in high school. They were all orange. Yeah. Which, Which color do you like? Neon's my favorite. I have about, probably about five pairs of those. Is that the first one? Yeah. yeah. Those are nice. Those are my favorite. But I any, had that in orange. Any like original, like with the gray on gray colorway is my favorite. Whether it's orange, blue, anything in red inside there, pink is my favorite. But this was always my number one shoe. You ever make shoes on Nike ID? Yes. Yeah, I did that with these a couple times. They never come out exactly the way you expect them to come Those out. Nice. Those are nice. Go ahead, Larry. The, the picture you never clicked. This is your number one. Oh, they are mags. The air mags. Do you know these, Larry? You never saw back, back to the, the future. future ones. You saw I back. Yeah, yeah. So, back to your point. <laughs> I was fighting in uh, Rutherford. Uh -huh. So, have some time to kill. I go with I go with Nick Pace. We go to the city to a uh, flight club. Mm, they have. And we're looking around, and they had the air mags in a size. Eight and a half. That's my size. Yeah. So I'm like, if I win a bonus, ah. I'm going to buy those shoes. They were $4,500. I said, I'm going to buy those shoes. Sure enough, I won to fight the night bonus. Nick's like, you getting the shoes? I'm like, hell no, I can't <laughs> the shoes. I couldn't justify spending that much. Although now they go for about seven to eight, depending on what the size. So if I would have bought them and just sat on them, 
for four or five years not mm -hmm. touch them. I could have resold them and made a couple thousand. But I probably would have worn So that's them. an interesting thing, too. I see a lot of times people advertising to sell their... You would buy from just like a random dude mm -hmm. a pair of sneakers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can. Well, of course, when you buy online, you can. They rate the seller, so you know who you're getting from. Okay. You're gonna read the reviews before you buy it. But my my answer to that question, obviously, not talking about Air Max, but just talking about like a, like like a pair of Jordans, like a pair of Elevens mm -hmm. from somebody online. My max is like 300, three, depending on the shoe. Yeah, it was like a pair. If it was a pair of breads. If I really wanted right, them, right. or they're hard to get. But I feel like if I have like. You ever you ever see the the high end sneakers like uh, Balenciagas? Or, right. They're like nine hundred dollars for Easy. a pair of sneakers. Easy. I couldn't justify that because I feel like like if I straight my shoe on the corner, I'd be like, oh man. And they're not even that nice. But if I they're if they're you know eighty ninety hundred dollar Nike Those are good. SBs, Fila's, yeah. Fila. Fila. Two for thirty. <laughs> Two pairs of sneakers for thirty bucks. Are or those no. are those sneakers older than me? These. <laughs> no. Well, we got to get going. We got to wrap this up. Yes, this was good sense that you're a great, great guest. Yeah, great guest. Good to talk to you, brother. Great. Thank you. Pleasure having you. Larry, thank you. We got to be back Sensei, on next time. Do you have time. any uh, social media you want to throw out? TSMA Regal Park on Instagram. Okay. That's what we use to uh, do all our social media stuff. Do you do the Twitter too? No. Okay. Do really you have anything for yourself? You should really have yourself your own Instagram, like... Like super good looking he could guy. Be like an Instagram nah. model. Right? Dude, he'd have like thirty thousand followers in I a week. Not. <laughs> <laughs> well, once we set up the ninety day challenge exercise videos, you watch. Superstar. YouTube superstar. <laughs> Alright, we'll catch you guys next week. Thank you. Thanks guys. That was cool. Awesome. It it got hot here. It did. I feel like the air went off. Yeah. It did. With your hat, you're did. good. He's a little shiny. You know how loud the, the I, I had the while you guys were in there. I had oh. them running the air, changing it up. We had something to right? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah, be nice to my stuff, man. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. I'll be right back. Well, we're done, right? Yeah, but I'm gonna come back after the meeting's over. Um. <laughs>